former State Department senior advisor, Christian, the G7 does not appear to be in lockstep here, and it's the rest of the G7 saying August 31st is not going to work, and President Biden saying Taliban says so. Your reaction to that? Right. Well, I've been a, a critic of how the White House has reacted throughout this entire crisis, but I got to say, I'm with him on this one. I mean, who does Boris Johnson and his fellow G7ers think they are? Um, shutting down Kabul airport if the Taliban wanted to, I mean, it would just take a couple of guys in pickup trucks with mortar tubes uh, occasionally firing around into the airport, and that would be the end of flight operations, except for the most hazardous form of, of emergency evacuation. So who's in the G7? I mean, it's a snapshot of, of countries that were financially relevant in the mid-1970s. Italy, Canada. You also have some powerful countries, but they're kind of far away. Japan, not really into expeditionary warfare. I mean, is Boris Johnson going to go and do this? And there's also, you know, we're in the midst of a crisis of, of evacuating our U.S. citizens. And Boris Johnson is talking about, well, everyone who wants to leave Afghanistan should have safe passage. I, I think he might have a little problem with his own constituents if he starts talking about a huge flow of refugees. Christian, I think all fair points on that. And yet... It's those G7 countries that seem to have the backbone in this moment to say you can't capitulate to the Taliban's timeline. Doesn't that even make it worse that President Biden is out on his own on this one? It does, in a way, and, and because the Biden administration has really prioritized diplomacy with old Europe, with Western Europe, which is the heart of the G7 and also the EU and NATO. So, you know, uh, his predecessor, President Trump, really sort of looked at the world and looked at the way things were going with power and money and prioritized relations within the Gulf, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Israel, in the Pacific. It was transitioning to a view of the Indo-Pacific, drawing in India and prioritizing relations with Japan. Uh, uh, creating some relations with Taiwan, things like that. Biden threw all that out and said, no, I'm going to go hang with my buddies uh, at the G7. Mm -hmm. They've really sort of taken a Europe-centric view. To, so to be rebuked by Europe is kind of a stinger. I want to get your take on this, Christian. We want to find out what happened in Wuhan. President Biden set to be briefed on the Intel community's COVID origins review, possibly as soon as today. Take a listen. But it seems to me that the type of research being done uh, at that lab, uh, it, it was not a naturally occurring virus. They're trying to create a super SARS-like virus through genetic modification with the eye towards creating a vaccine to protect uh, from it. The problem is they were doing this in very unsafe uh, labs with not following proper safety protocols. So China, of course, denying its lab had anything to do with the outbreak and is accusing the United States of drumming up the lab theory for political purposes. All right. So, Christian, do you expect us to learn anything of any value from this intel report? Not entirely. You never know what's going to be in it. And of course, there'll be an unclassified part or a leaked part and a classified part. You know, when Biden announced this 90 days ago, saying he wanted an intelligence review, this incidentally was after his administration shut down a review that was going on at the State Department, which after all gave a grant to this lab. But he even telegraphed when he announced this um, investigation, this 90 day period, that, well, different agencies may come up with different answers. So you get this sort of um, um, mud color uh, assessment from our $80 billion a year intelligence bureaucracy that says, well, this agency thinks that, uh, the CIA thinks that, the DIA thinks that, and we, we assess with moderate confidence that this may have happened. And you realize this is basically a guess. And you think, well, I could have guessed, and it wouldn't have cost $80 billion. So I think the Biden administration may actually want that ambiguous response, because with everything going on in the world, it does not want to be forced with coming up with a way to make China pay for creating the virus if it did. You know, don't we have an intelligence service to help us find out answers to questions like this, even when other countries like China may not want to cooperate? It boggles my mind that we can't get focused on this. But Christian, we're out of time. We'll have to save it for next time. Thanks for being with us today. We appreciate it.